All right. Uh, Coach Randy Cross, CBS. Welcome. Sir, thank you. Pleasure to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. Thanks. Hey, um, for a guy that's been involved in this option style for a while, um, how, how difficult or what are the specific challenges of weaving the gun in from a timing standpoint? Sure, absolutely. You know, like your the direction you're heading there, it's it's timing and leverage with all of offense, but particularly the option world, right? So I think for us, the the key component has been keeping it the same both under center and in the gun for our offensive linemen. That's the key piece because you can take the skill guys and, you know, do a lot of different things, but being consistent and within what we call our four core fundamentals up front, you know, we, we want to minimize the fundamentals that we're teaching to our offensive linemen so that they can become machine-like in their execution, right? They, they can go out and, and, and really be great in, in what we're doing schematically because we're minimizing their skill set. So I think that's really the key to your question is, is getting those O-line guys grooved up. And then as far as the skill guys, um, you know, understanding the nuances um, that create leverage in the gun, it's a little different than under center. And, and getting all of those tracks, you know, because everything we do is a track, right, to, in order to gain leverage on the defense. So tying those things together, starting with a mindset of, of minimizing things up front so those guys can, can uh, perfect their core fundamentals, which will allow them to play fast, which creates that timing that, that you're asking about. Uh, Scott Wyckoff. Hi, Coach. Scott Wyckoff with WBAL Radio in Baltimore and the Navy Radio Network. What's impressed you the, the most a week and a few days into fall camp with this offense? Yeah. Well, I think what's impressed me the most is, you know, we had our learning curve, and we talked a lot about when I saw you guys, Scott, and we talked back in the spring um, about learning the new language, right? And it was like going overseas and that. Uh, we have grown exponentially in that in that arena, in that area. Um, the communication piece, it, you know, is, is really improved. In fact, um, you know, we're at a point where we're functioning fluidly now as far as that goes. Uh, so that obviously is allowing us to focus on the detail of the assignment, uh, you know, and back to Randy's question earlier, you know, the timing pieces and, and the steps and angles and all the all the detail, of the assignment things that actually make an offense function, right? So, you know, it's it's been really encouraging over the first week and a half to, to see us go out and execute the offense uh, more proficiently. Now, you know, obviously we're still early in camp. We're not consistently executing it on the on a high enough level uh, to our expectation. You know, we want elite execution is what we talk about, and, and we're not there yet, but we have made uh, – Tremendous progress in that direction. I think, you know, both Coach Volker and Coach Newberry were commenting to me just yesterday um, how how much different our offense, the execution, the speed of the attack, and, and those things are compared to spring. In, in other words, the amount of improvement we've made. And so that's really encouraging. You know, it's really encouraging, you know, but I'm a coach, so it's it's never, never good enough, right? We're always trying to get better. We want to maximize our talents, um, you know, and, and leave it all out there on the field, so. It also seems like the practices that I've seen, you really, for lack of a better word, put the pressure on for the quickness to make things happen. Is that trying to replicate as close as you can be to the game situation to, to really make everyone in the offense react quickly? Yes, sir. Absolutely. You know, we want to play as fast as we can. We want to practice at a tempo. And that's one of the things that has been really encouraging is um, it, it's a very fast paced practice and that's very intentional, right? Um, we live in a social media generation with our kids, so they get distracted very quickly. <laughs> so it's, it's you know, Twitter used to be 40 characters only, right? So, but they've changed that. But, you know, we used to talk about, you know, you got to communicate it in Twitter format with this generation, right? You got to get right to the point. You got to frame things in a way that chunks it so they, they understand. But, you know, you want to keep them moving so they don't get distracted. But that's also how we want to play. You know, we talk all the time. We want to be the most mentally and physically tough uh, unit in the country. We want to uh, be the most well executing unit in the country. Um, so you got to pressure guys, you got to hold their feet to the fire. So they find out how great they can be. Right. Um, you know, and, and you got to be smart and managing things and, and keeping them healthy. You know, we're not, you know, it, it's uh, it's a good mix of old school and new school, I guess, is, is the effort, you know, 
Um, but yeah, so we are, we're absolutely doing that. We're trying to push the tempo, the volume. We get a large number of reps accomplished, right? Uh, and that's been really encouraging as well over the first week and a half is our guys embracing and understanding the why of what we're trying to accomplish in practice because the tempo has increased and, and of course the volume, right? Uh, but if you were out at practice today, you might have noticed that the tempo, uh, we were in spiders, you know, and, uh, you know, no pads really. And so the, the tempo was much slower today and that was very intentional. That kind of goes to my comment about mixing old school and new school. And I think Coach Newberry does a tremendous job of this. So we backed off him today and we're doing a lot of teaching. You know, not that we don't teach on those other practices because that's what coaches are. We're teachers. Um, but we intentionally slow things down to correct certain things, um, you know, to help us continue to move forward and also let our guys get their legs back under them a little bit because we got a full pad stay tomorrow and we got to maximize that day. <laughs> and what's been your biggest takeaway and impression of the Naval Academy athlete, a unique athlete that uh, you've never been able to coach before coming to the academy? What's been your biggest takeaway? I love them. I'm having the time of my life. These kids are exceptional. I mean, they are exceptional. You know, it's uh, we we do a thing uh, called uh, message of the day, right? And that's uh, just you know a positive message, an encouraging message, something in tune with what we're doing right now. You know, this as a coach, this is my favorite time of year. It's 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 team and ball. You know, it's ball and team. We're not necessarily having to worry about academics right now and, and, and ball and team, baby. It's, it's, you know, and, and growing a team and growing, you know, bringing uh, chemistry and growing a team together. So we ask our, these guys to, you know, present ideas, right. And that are galvanizing for our team. And I've been blown away by them. I mean, articulate, <laughs> succinct. I mean, I'm like, I'm in the back taking notes. I mean, it's uh, they're, they're just an incredibly impressive group uh, of young men um, and they're very coachable. Um, you know, um, and, and they've really been a pleasure to coach. Thanks, Coach. Yes, sir. Joe Miller. Hey, Coach. Uh, uh, Joe Miller, Navy Radio Network. Uh, Scott was talking a little bit about tempo, and I wanted to ask you about sort of what you're feeling on pace of play is and sort of yeah. do you have an idea of how fast you guys want to play during a game? Is there a number of plays that you want to get off? I mean, we've talked a yeah. lot about in the past. Yeah. about time of possession with mm -hmm. this team and sort of winning that battle. But what is your ideal pace of play? And, and what do you see as far as uh, an ideal number of plays that you want to get off during a game? Right. Well, you know, when I'm referring to tempo and practice, I'm not really talking about the world of spread offenses like Tennessee, where you're trying to, you know, go super, super fast. Because, sure. you know, we do want to control the clock. We want to play complementary football, Right. So in order to be a great offense, our job is to get first downs and score touchdowns uh, and hold on to the football, which keeps our defense off the field, right? And uh, so if we're able to do that, then we're going to minimize defensive snaps. So, you know, I think the average defense in, in college football plays somewhere between 80 and 100 snaps a game. So what I would tell you is uh, the answer to, my, to your question as far as offensive, total number of offensive plays, I would like our defense to average around 50 plays a game. So whatever that's required from us as far as holding on to the ball, right? Um, you know, that's that's the goal, you know, and, and you know, a good mix of, of ball control, you know, uh, but also creating explosive plays, chunk plays. These are the things that we talk to our guys about, right? That creates momentum and obviously leads to points. So sure. we want to be able to balance the two. Uh, and that's really the core uh, value of of what we're doing, incorporating, you know, the under center option, the gun option, of course, the quick passing game um, and moving the pocket and doing those things in the passing game. And then obviously um, we're working on drop back stuff as well. So it's it's a broad menu of offense. And and thankfully we, we do have, as we were discussing, as Scott was talking about, uh, we have intelligent kids. So they're able to absorb the information and, and allow us to have a big menu. Um, so, you know, Normally, in offense in college football, um, you know, we're averaging, you know, in a ball control system, you know, 75 to 85 plays a game. Mm -hmm. uh, and and that that's probably realistic for us. I know that you're not going to drastically change what you do offensively. It's still option based. But one of the things that we've talked about uh, with the, the you know, it, it, over the past four or five years is sort of the offense reacting to what the defense, you know, does on the opening series or the first couple of series, and then sort of 
being reactionary to that. Would you say ideally you want to be a little bit more proactive in what you want to do offensively? And also on that, do you do you do you <clears throat> want to script plays to start a game? Do you have like, hey, these are the, our ten plays that we want to get in, or how how do you approach game calling when it comes to starting a game and sort of scripting that opening? And how um, proactive do you want to be offensively? Right. Well, we are we want to control the game. We you know we want to. Uh, be a step ahead of the defense, make them chase us, right? Um, there's obviously ebb and flow, and and, and with what the nature, and, and this is what you're referring to over the last five or six years, you know, people think with the triple option, there's a silver bullet defense, you know, and, and so you may prepare uh, for a particular front all week and get a different front on Saturday, but I think one of the great things about what we're doing on offense now is, is we do have – uh, plays that are outside the option world, you know, conventional things of that nature. Uh, and again, some of the past game concepts we're implementing, which, you know, will allow us to uh, move the football, get first downs as we recognize what their option plan is. Uh, you know, and, and the faster we recognize their option plan, the more, you know, obviously the quicker we can go to work on attacking it. So, you know, we have enough offense I should you know is what I guess I'm saying that you hope to be able to get off to a faster start uh and you know uh, if they're giving you something that maybe you hadn't prepared for that week but you know kind of to circle it all up um we install versus front throughout camp and so really we view it in the option world as there's really seven basic option defenses that people will run now they may mix match them uh, we call those voodoo fronts, but there's seven basic fronts and we have a menu of plays that fit those fronts. And then of course, when you're game plan and you have tweaks to, to gain advantages sure. and make scheme and things like that. So what we would hope is because we've prepared the way we have moving through camp, that even if they showed up in a front, an option front that maybe we hadn't practiced extensively for that week, we can still go function at a high level and play fast and get out in front of them. Um, you know, now, that takes continuity. That takes a number of reps. And as we're in year one and installing a new offense, you know, there might be some growth there as we head through the season. But that is obviously the hope. You know, we want to react immediately and uh, and stay out in front of them. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate the answer. Absolutely. Yeah, no problem, Joe. Wags. Good to see you, Grant. Hey, great to see you. How are you doing? Great. So yeah. – uh, you know, since spring ball till now, have you been able to install your complete offensive package or did you decide from the outset that there'd be not enough time to do that and maybe just a condensed version of your package? We're pretty close. Um, we're not we're not there yet. You know, um, very intentional. Uh, we kind of shut down install today to go back and correct and make sure that we were crossing T's and dot I's, which quite honestly, I I'd plan to do at this point in camp anyways. Um, uh, there are some things that I would like to get in. There are probably some things that we won't install this year. And because it all goes, it, it will always circle or, or go back to what are the strengths of our personnel, you know, and, and what can our guys go do the best that sets them up for success the most. Right. And, and that's, you know, that's the main thing. And, and, and the great thing is, is we continue to recruit and evolve, um, you know, into these next couple of years you know, we still have room to, to grow. There's still a high ceiling of things that we can do to keep people off balance. But, you know, the core uh, of who we are and, and creating our identity, it's it's absolutely in. And, and that's what's been encouraging is the execution of that, of those things has improved, um, you know, and, and so that's good. That's really positive. So were there some elements of your offense that when you got to Navy and evaluated the personnel, you said, I just don't think that's going to work here and we'll scrap that or, and then by, on the other hand, where there's some things that perhaps you didn't do at Kennesaw that we got here at Navy and said, you know what, I think we could do that here. We're doing a lot more than we did at Kennesaw. You know, we were, you know, um, very much in the, what we would call here now, the beer series, the, the home base triple option uh, world. And we, and really the thing that made us different at Kennesaw is we implemented the quick passing game, right? Three-step stuff. We moved the pocket, uh, and then we could also function in the gun uh, from a pass game standpoint and had a minimal run game in the gun. 
the big difference here is is we're doing much more than those things. We're you know um, from zone option and other and other items that you guys will see as we move forward. So really, the build out of the Navy offense was with the Navy personnel in mind. Now also in mind of all right, here's what our profiles from a recruiting standpoint are. Here's where we'd like to grow to create position flexibility. Uh, we want some guys that can cross over, wide receivers who can really play slot and slots who could function as wide receivers when we want them to, which creates a lot of flexibility, which allows us to have a lot of smoke and mirrors, you know, and, and that goes back to what I was talking about, about the O-line minimizing their skill set so we can get them playing fast and aggressive with great fundamental execution and do a lot of stuff behind them to keep people off balance. And, and, you know, and I think we're making significant progress in that area, uh, particularly through camp, um, you know, so, uh, really, you know, Wags, what we're doing is we're building the Navy offense around Navy personnel. And then as the personnel grows and changes, we can stay with that and continue to be focusing on our strengths. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's the, that's the, that's the end game. So uh, something I noticed now, last, this past week while out of practice, I mean, when you've talked a lot about the short pass game, the quick passing game, but yes, one thing when you're sure, and it can be very effective in getting the ball to the perimeter and, out into space without you know having to pitch it or whatever. But yep. one thing I noticed that it happened if uh, if a ball bounces off a guy's shoulder pads, there's always there's a lot of people in the box because it's the short passing game means you're still there where there's a lot of bodies and it can get picked and go the other way. How much emphasis, you know, are you talking to receivers and quarterbacks about, you know, because they're not accustomed to this. This is something they're learning as they go. Sure. And uh, you know, that that's the downside is if you give up pick, pick sixes. Yeah, we definitely don't want to do that. You know, uh, there was a Hall of Fame Georgia high school coach uh, that I was around, and, and he, he told me, you know, he said, Grant, uh, three things can happen on a pass, and two of them are bad. You know what I mean? So um, I've always taken that to heart. But and, – and, Wags, we're not going to – we're not a spread team. We're not going to go out there and throw it 30, 40 times a game. We're going to do what we need to to keep the chains moving, you know, eight to 12 yards. Um, I think it all goes back to execution and creating space, you know, and then throwing and catching in practice. I mean, you've been out there. You see how much we're throwing the ball right now from a practice standpoint. That doesn't mean we're going to go throw it 40 times in a game. But if you don't throw and catch, particularly when that's not been a mainstay of the offense, um, the kids got to get used to it. You know what I mean? You, you got to go out and do it. And we'll throw and practice. Uh, considerably more than we'll throw in games in order to be efficient so we don't get those situations. So I, I hope um, I'm hopeful that you didn't put the whammy on us right there, Wags. I, I've never had a I've never had a, a situation like that occur in a game. Now we had one at practice with the uh with the plebes yesterday or the day before where that where that occurred, but that was uh that was a lot about um them trying to learn what we're trying to do, not so much about the defense making a great play. <laughs> right. Um, and then last, before I pass it off to someone else, um, the tight ends, I know you haven't yet been able to recruit. You know, I think last year you were able to recruit some tight ends, but they're plebes. But as far as the guys that are on the depth chart, they're converted guys from another position, usually defense. Um, you know, how much can you incorporate them beyond just blocking? I mean, you got to be careful with that, too. I mean, uh, you know, I saw one tight end who I, I, <laughs> I said that's why he was a of defensive end before <laughs> but, right, yeah those are the those are the uh, castaways right the uh, repurposed guys and and honestly they're doing a great job uh, they, they're they're one of my favorite groups you want to talk about team guys and great attitude um and doing whatever you ask them to do man they're phenomenal and uh, and they have a skill set that'll help us you know and you know yes we're not going to split them out wide and ask them to go function like wide outs like we would like to possibly do in the future with the kids we're recruiting you know, and, and create matchups and things like that, which we ultimately would love to have with our tight ends. Um, we're going to, we're going to, again, play to their strengths and use them to gain a schematic advantage from a formation standpoint, um, you know, or get a bigger body out there to help us in, in blocking on the perimeter. Um, you know, that's, uh, again, everything we do, we just had a, a staff meeting evaluating you know, our personnel and our depth chart, right? So everything we do, every decision we make, you know, is about, all right, what can our kids do the best so that we can go work on those things, focus on that and, and maximize them and give them a chance to go win. Pete, Matt Hurst. 
Coach, just want to piggyback on Wags' question about the tight ends. Um, to that extent, is there any way that even somebody, you know, like a Cody Howard, who is part of the way to a tight ends build at 220 pounds, that if the need becomes necessary, that you could potentially um, move into that position just to experiment and see where it goes? Pete, have you been eavesdropping on our staff meetings? <laughs> <laughs> I, I just like football a lot, and I think about football a lot. <laughs> no, that's that's exactly how we're we're visualizing using him. Um, that's exactly how I'm going to use him because, really, quite honestly, he's he fits more of the mold of what we're recruiting now at tight end. And we got to evolve towards a little bit. We're we're not quite there yet. If you came out to practice, you wouldn't see a lot of it yet. But that's absolutely where I'm going. You know, he he hasn't played a ton of wide receivers, so I'm trying to make sure I give him every opportunity right. to be proficient in the skill set that we need at wide receiver before we start moving him into that other role. But he is absolutely a hybrid, which I love. You know, there's a lot of value. And plus, Cody's an unbelievable kid, tough, hardworking, um, smart. So uh, we absolutely are looking to use him uh, in that manner. The calendar tells you you have 22 days but as you evaluate the quarterback position right now, you have two guys that are coming back from injuries. You have a couple of guys that haven't played a lot of game football. Right. Uh, and you have a, a, another youngster that hasn't played a, a lot. As you evaluate them, you know, when, when do you have to have one of them give you the confidence that, yeah, we can go forward with that guy, at least this game against Notre Dame? Sure, absolutely. Well, sooner rather than later. You know, I would tell you by this time uh, next week, um, things will be firming up to a degree. I'm not giving myself a deadline here. <laughs> right? I'm not I'm not saying that we're going to announce a starting quarterback at the end of next week. That is not what, what we're doing. But um, obviously, from a rep standpoint, uh, you have to start looking at it in that manner. Um, and I've been really encouraged, really encouraged by some guys, you know, um, the amount of improvement. Um uh, that Blake has made is, is, has been substantial. Uh, he really has made a lot of improvement, um, you know, through, from the spring through our June workouts and now into camp. Um, and I'll tell you, Ty uh, has picked up the offense really well and done some things well. Of course, Xavier's out there, you know, so, uh, and, and Braxton, the young buck, you know, right. uh, you know, so I'm, I am very encouraged by that room. I think things are taking shape. Um, and, and I feel good that we're going to have a, a solid starter and a, and, and a solid number two guy. And, and really, quite honestly, in this system, you better have two quarterbacks who can go play, um, you know, and, and, and be able to, to somewhat be interchangeable. Um, so I'm encouraged by that. And, of course, we need, obviously have to have a, a solid third guy. Um, so I'm, I'm very encouraged by that quarterback room right now. You know, they're always hanging around, you know, with, you know, talking to Coach Jasper, always hanging around. Every every evening during camp, they they show up in my office and they want the script for the next day. Um, so, it, you know, I, I'm I'm really fired up about where those guys' heads are at, and you see some of that improvement happening on the field because as a result. Is it a case of you all or one of them taking the job, or you all having to choose one of them, so to speak, if you follow me? Uh, yes, yeah, sir. I, I um. The next week will tell. Right mm -hmm. now, I think you got a couple guys that are making a move to separate themselves. Um, now you also are gonna, and you brought this up, you know, you got to take into account some game experience because you're gonna be on a very big stage in Ireland. And and you may want to set the table for success, knowing that you you might potentially play two guys um in order to help you win that game, you know, and and uh so there are a lot of variables out there, you know. Um you know, you're, you're talking about being in, in front of a lot of people in another country. So, you know, game game experience is, is going to be at a premium there, right? But on the other hand, um, you know, uh, somebody may separate themselves and define it, and it is what it is because you're going to go get, play the guy that you feel like gives you the best chance. And, again, I think we're going to be fortunate this year if these guys keep trending like they seem to be right now uh, that you're going to have some depth at that position. Football offensively is kind of evolving to a point where uh, coaches run a lot of the same plays, but just doing it out of different formations yeah. uh, for the most part. Is that something that 
you would describe what you're installing overall, or is it still, you know, pretty much basic, similar fundamental formations to what uh, has occurred here in the past? Um, all the above. There, there's a lot of formation. Absolutely. The answer to your question is, is we are in a lot of different formations and we're implementing a lot of different motions and movements. Um, to, to your point about plays schematics which really goes to the offensive line um you know schematically we will have much more than the average spread team or you know that we're because we're still an option football team you right. know and so um i think those of you guys you guys who have sharp eyes because obviously y'all do um you're going to see some of the nuanced things that really make us different than what other people are doing, I believe. Uh, there are some things we're doing, particularly in the under center option world, that quite honestly nobody else is doing. Um, and it's been exciting to grow that. Um, you know, but like I say, guys with a trained eye, they're gonna they're gonna pick up on it pretty quickly, I think. Um, you know, um, but maybe the general public might not. 